Hello and welcome to WTF, where we help you transform food in your kitchen. I'm Janie. I'm Roman. And today we're showing you how to make a spectacularly delicious gyro at home. Gyro. Yeah. yeah. So first off, we're <laughs> we're having three people here, and we have three different pronunciations: gyro from us New Yorkers, gyro、yeah. from the New Englanders,、yeah. and Cole says gyro. What do you think it is? Drop it in the comments because we cannot agree here. So let like, us know. I would like to know for sure. Yeah.、I、still think it's a gyro anyway, but、yep. let's move on. Yeah. So traditionally, right, this is often kind of thinly layered slices of meat、yep. on a giant stick, and you can only get it street vendors,、exactly. restaurants.、Exactly. But we wanted to really tackle this recipe in an easy way that you can do it in minutes at home. So Rome is going to take you step by step through the recipe, and of course, you know what you need to make sure that it comes out perfect every time. Right, take、right. it away. All right, here we go. The, the gyro or gyro or whatever you call it.、Uh, <laughs> one of my favorite little street snack foods.、Um, growing up in New York City, something I had, you know, regularly. I go to the pizza shop、mm -hmm. and they'd have the the spit、yeah. and it'd be roasted. And you have like that nice big cone、mm -hmm. of meat and they just slice it right up there,、yeah. right into a pizza.、Mm -hmm. um, I loved it. It was like, you know, one of the things I love eating, you know, in New York.、Um, so I kind of wanted to do it here. Uh, to see if we can get the same results, and、uh, when we did do it, it came out great. So we're going to share this recipe with you.、Um, you want to start out with a nice piece of lamb leg,、uh, very important.、Uh, we, so we're going to take that, and we're going to cut into that. And what you want to do is you want to get a good、uh, inch and a half, two inch pieces of this. You don't want it to be too large because you're going to process this in the food processor. So you kind of want manageable pieces.、Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think when you put the two big pieces, they start shaking. Yeah, exactly. And, and exactly. And it just kind of freaks out. Exactly.、Um, if you're like,、oh, I'm not a big lamb person, you could do this with beef as well because you're gonna see how this all comes together. You can theoretically use any meat you want, but you definitely lamb is. Yeah, but lamb is kind of the preferred one. A lot of people、mm -hmm. um, appreciate appreciate lamb, and a lot of people don't.、Mm -hmm. And sometimes I've seen recipes where they'll sub in half of the meat with ground beef, or sometimes、mm -hmm. even pork. Instead of just straight lamb,、Ooh. I I like straight lamb because、yep. you know I'm a, I'm a big fan of lamb, and I've actually never had、uh, gyro with anything other than lamb in it. So Roman refuses to say gyro. <laughs> I it's because it's not it's not it's, correct. Yeah, it's, it's not been correct. Go, it's been going on all week. Um, so one of the cool things about this recipe is that instead of really thinly slicing the meat. Which can really take forever, and it's hard to do in the home kitchen. We're yes, kind of coming、sure. out with the way for you to get that whole shape. Exactly. All right. Now that we have our lamb cut, we are going to process it. But before we even process it, I have some onions and I have some garlic. I like to start with the onions and garlic because I like to break those down、mm -hmm. and then put the meat over the top of it. That way, it, it、mm. blends. It blends a little bit better when you、okay. just put the meat and try to throw the onions on top of it. Sometimes、right. it doesn't mix well. Yeah, and then you can get a big old chunk of onion. Exactly.、Okay. We, nobody wants that.、Mm -hmm. All right. So we have some onions. We'll throw in there, and then some minced garlic. And we're just going to give this、uh, a quick blitz.、Um, I usually go about thirty seconds, and I'll stop it, and then I'll. I'll just get it down there with my with my spatula. I kind of I don't want this to be pureed,、mm -hmm. but I also don't want to get a big piece of onion in the middle of the. the、yep. All right, so once we got that down to here, that's perfect. I'll just get that down there so we don't lose any of that, and then we'll add just half of the, the、okay. meat. Yeah, and、uh, this also depends on the capacity of your food processor. So、of、we、course. have I think what sixteen cups. We have one of the big ones.、Yeah. If you have a smaller one, smaller batches. So I got some parsley,、mm -hmm. some thyme, oregano, and then your salt and pepper. And then I'm gonna give that a quick blitz, just for about 30 seconds, also. We're just looking to incorporate. We're not looking to puree. Okay. okay. All right. So now that we've got that、uh, where we want it, we have our meat glue. And our sodium tripolyphosphate. Now this is awesome because this right here, this is、um, something that we use often here, and it'll retain the moisture in this dish,、mm -hmm. um, and and it'll keep it nice and juicy even after the long cook it's gonna get. And then the meat glue, of course, will hold it all together. So we'll hold into that nice cone shape. If you ever walk into a pizza shop in New York City, you'll see that big cone sitting、yes. on the spit. It's like, wow, it's amazing. And so this will this will give it that that holding. So we'll be able to put that on our spit and put it in the oven. 
right. Yep. If you are, if you have watched WTF in the past, you've seen, you'll kind of you'll see this combination of tripolyphosphate with the meat glue pretty regularly. We use it in to make like McRibs, chicken nuggets, a whole bunch of other things because this combination of hold of shape and a hold of moisture is really essential to making like a really juicy. Um, I would call this kind of a force meat almost, you know, like yeah. you know, like a ground meat mixture. So it's pretty, really cool. Pretty much. Yeah. So now that we have the uh, sodium tripolyphosphate and the meat glue down, I'm going to add the rest of the lamb to this mix. We don't want to blitz it too much, like I said. We do kind of like the texture of it, yep. um, not pureed. And so we'll just, we'll just give it a quick couple of pulses, take a look at it. Actually, to be honest with you, I said 30 seconds. I think maybe 15 seconds okay. might be appropriate. I think you still wanted to have a little bit of that texture exact, left. Exactly. Okay. I think. So I'm going to get this into the bowl. It'll be a lot easier to work with it once it's in the bowl. Yep. And uh, one note, if you are working with meat glue, which is in this recipe, and you're prepping like this, you do want to make sure you're taking out your meat glue pretty much almost right before you're going to start working with it because it's an enzyme that will start denaturing uh, as soon as it starts hitting oxygen. So if you're taking yep. it up like an hour before, and you're leaving it on your counter, there is a chance that it's not going to work by the time it gets into your blend. So, you know, save that one for last. Correct. All right. So now we're going to set this up. We have our quart container. Here we go. Beautiful. And we are going to line that up with a piece of plastic wrap, which I have right here. that right in there and I'm going to use warm one more piece because it's very easy for that meat to collapse into it and then mm -hmm. and you got a mess on your hands okay all right so once you have your pork container line we're going to fill it up with our our lamb you want to go a little bit at a time because what happens is you can form air pockets if you try to put it all in together. Right. And then you get a cone where there's like little pockets okay. and you don't want that. And so what I'll do is I'll start with small increments of the meat and I'll just get it down there and I'll pat it. And little by little, little by little, we'll get this filled. Okay. But uh, it's, it's, it's super important to yeah. not get those air pockets in there. Okay. So while you're filling, do you want to kind of talk about the next steps? Because I know we're not going to show the entire you know, resting process on camera. Do you want to talk about what happens after you get this filled in? So once this is filled in, we are going to go right into the refrigerator and we are going to let this rest overnight. Uh, we'll give the meat glue time to do its its magic. It'll hold it all together. And then tomorrow when we unmold this, it's going to, it's going to be beautiful. You, you'll, you guys are going to see. It's going to be beautiful. And then we'll get it right into our Al Pastor skewer stand and we'll be ready to go. Yeah. But it's very important to uh, to let this really rest overnight to get to make sure that it's well formed because yeah. you don't want this falling apart. Yes. If you are short on time, it is possible to speed this process up because it does have meat glue. So because it has meat glue, you can actually put this into a sous vide bath if you have one at around, I think we did like 120 for 10 yeah. minutes. And what it does is it speeds up the activation of the meat glue enzyme. It also kind of starts denaturing it. But if you are short on time, it's a great way to just speed that process up somewhat. Exactly. And I always like to give it a couple of taps. And you can feel it as you're tapping. You can feel that meat starting to sink down to the bottom. Mm -hmm. And now I think we're ready to go into the fridge. OK, cool. All right. So yeah. So we're yeah. going to come back with a completed one. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Okay, so we are back and we have our lamb ready to go. It's nice cone shape, it's been a day. And we're gonna unmold this for you. As you can see, it's, it's very nice, beautiful. Yeah, it's like, it has this like firm squishiness and that is very characteristic of, so, of the uh, sodium tripolyphosphate. Oh, it's, a, it's like meat jello. That is beautiful. I don't know if I quite go there, but yeah, kind of like. Um, so we are, we are all ready to go. So we have our, our uh, Al Pastor skewer stand, 
which this is this is beautiful. I didn't even know this existed until you showed it to me. Mm -hmm. um, and the first time that we did it, I was like amazed how it worked. We were gonna jury rig it. <laughs> we're like somehow we're gonna make it stand up and yeah, and, and send us a it, spot. I don't, I don't, I don't think it would have worked out. Mm -hmm. You know, I think this is the way to go. But all right, so it's super easy. We are all set. Um, Meek Lou did his job. Um, so we're gonna get this into the skewer. Not too hard. Yeah, if you want to buy this, it's on Amazon for like 20 bucks. Uh, we don't have any affiliate links, so we can't, or I'm not going to link to it, but you can just Google it. All right. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, all right, that's in there. Yeah. All and, right. And the reason why we want to do it like this is because otherwise it's, it might collapse, yeah. it might fall down. Exactly. Or you might have to roast it on site, in which case we're trying to get that like, you know, authentic browning on all sides here. Yep, and so I think we're ready to go. But one more thing before we even okay. go into the oven. Oh. We have our- I was supposed to move that for him. And <laughs> we have our combustion thermometer. Okay, what is a combustion thermometer? So this thermometer is brought to us from Chris Young and his team of Chef Step and Modernist Cuisine fame. Mm -hmm. um, this, this is a great thermometer. Normally I would use an instant read thermometer and you know, you constantly check it, open the oven, yes. check it, mm -hmm. open the oven, check it in, you know, and everybody knows every time you open the oven, temperature goes down. Yeah. So this handy guy, we're gonna get this right into our meat. Mm -hmm. It's synced up nicely um, and we set our temperature. We want an internal temperature of, of 165 and okay. we're gonna cook it at 300 Fahrenheit. And this is actually gonna tell us when this is gonna be done. Yeah, it's really, really it's amazing. Super, super intuitive. Yeah. Um, the last time that I used it, I was, I was, I'm not gonna lie to you, I was amazed. Like, I actually set my timer on my phone mm -hmm. to this timer, yeah. and it, it, it cooked exactly as it yeah. said. It was amazing, it was incredible. I'm, I'm not even gonna lie to you, I was impressed. Yes, and one of the cool things about this is that what it means is that you're pretty much never going to overcook anything in the oven again or undercook it. So it's not going to be dry. It's not yep. going to be raw. And this is not, I want to point out, this is not a sponsored ad. No one's paying us to say any of no, this. No, no, no. We at didn't all. even get this for free. We went and bought it because we wanted to try it. And we're, yeah. we're just super psyched to like use it here. So we just wanted to put it out there that, you know, if you're like, hey, I'm struggling with these. This is such a great solution. It's an investment, but it is a worthwhile it, it's investment. It's definitely a worthwhile investment. Yeah. I, I did have my reservations, but after using it a few times, I got to tell you that this thing is money. It's gold. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. All right. So now that we're all set, we got our we got our temperature in the in the combustion. Mm -hmm. We have our thermometer in there. Okay. It's in the on the skewer. Yep. Let's go in the oven. Cool. We do have the oven at 300 Fahrenheit, and we're looking for an internal temperature of 165 which the combustion thermometer will take care of for us. All right, now that we are ready to go, we're gonna take this beautiful gyro right out of the oven. Okay, moment of truth. We have this beautiful gyro 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 out of the oven, and we're gonna slice into it to show you how it came out. All right, here we go. We'll We'll get the slicing. Oh man. Oh wow. Whoa, that's beautiful. You wanna take a look at that? Ooh, so oh, that I don't gorgeous. know if the camera is picking it up or not, but you can really see that this meat is super, super juicy. Oh, and that's, that's one of so the benefits of having the combustion thermometer, but then also the sodium tripolyphosphate is making sure that as it roasts, you're not seeing any of that juices come out. And that's why even though this has been in the oven for the last hour or so, you know, there's nothing happening here in the pan. The pan is totally clean. Yeah, there's no juices coming out of it. So it's all in the gyro. Mm-hmm. Or gyro. <laughs> <laughs> now you don't even know what to call it anymore. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> all right, let's 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 adorn this with some some of our our gyro fixings. I have some tomato here. Some uh Tzatziki sauce. This is pretty much just some Greek yogurt, a little bit of cucumber, some garlic, a little bit of dill, and a little bit of, um, I'm always, always forgetting this, a little bit of mint. Cool. All right, some onions. All right, there we have it. All right, so will you do us the honors of trying oh, the first okay. piece of gyro? I will. 
So this meat has tremendous texture. So when we slice it real thin like that, it's just a little bit chewy. It's super packed and super flavorful, tender, and it's just got like a little bit of bounce, a little bit of chew. And this is a fantastic, you know, I would, uh, you know, off camera, we would just load this up with the, uh, <laughs> with the meat. Right. Uh, that is super tasty. I'm curious what you think. All right. Mmm. Wow. The, it's super, it's super tender. The meat, there's still a bunch of juices in it. And I know mm -hmm. that's from the triphosphate. It holds very well. As you can see, it was super easy to slice. It's not falling apart. Mm -hmm. It holds the shape very well. Yep. But man, yeah, that is juicy. I could eat like a bunch of these things. I'm yeah. probably going to actually. This would be actually surprisingly like an mm. easy weeknight dinner because you know, you can blend it up ahead of time, pop it in the oven, pop it in the fridge. Yep. And it basically takes mm. care of itself. So, or if you're serving a lot of people, this is an easy, super easy recipe. Get it in the links in the description below. And until next week or so, we will see you here in the test kitchen. I'm Janie. I'm Roman. Ah, oh, see, Cole said gyro. I, he said gyro. I said gyro because he said gyro. I said gyro. gyro. I did, okay. I did, I did, I did I, tell him earlier. In my neighborhood in New York, we call it gyro. In New York, but it's a gyro. It is.